Okay, we have come to the last two chapters in the book of Numbers, chapters 35 and chapters 36. What we're going to see is uh, how God is going to take care of the Levites, uh, the priests, how God is going to take care of people who uh, have killed somebody. Uh, but didn't do it on purpose. And then uh, one exception to the clans, to to the land that's given to, to each family. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, the text first. On the plains of Moab, by the Jordan, across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, command the Israelites to give the Levites towns to live in from the inheritance of the Israelites will possess and give them pasture lands around the towns. And then they will have towns to live in and pasture lands for the cattle they own and all the other animals. The pasture lands around the towns that you give the Levites will extend a thousand cubits from the town wall. Outside the town, measure 2000 cubits on the east side. 2,000 on the south side, 2,000 on the west, and 2,000 on the north, with the town in the center. They will have this area as pasture land for the towns. Six of the towns you give the Levites will be cities of refuge, to which a person who has killed someone may flee. In addition, give them 42 other towns. In all, you must give the Levites 48 towns together with their pasture lands. The towns you give the Levites from the land the Israelites possess are to be given in proportion to the inheritance of each tribe. Take many towns from a tribe that has many, but few from one that has few. Then the Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you cross the Jordan into Canaan, select some towns to be your cities of refuge to which a person who has killed someone accidentally may flee. They will be places of refuge from the avenger so that anyone accused of murder may not die before they stand trial before the assembly. These six towns will give you, you, will, you give will be this, your cities of refuge. Give three on this side of the Jordan and three in Canaan as cities of refuge. These six towns will be a place of refuge for Israelites and for foreigners residing among them, so that anyone who has killed another accidentally can flee there. If anyone strikes someone a fatal blow with an iron object, that person is a murderer, and the murderer is to be put to death. Or if someone is holding a stone and strikes someone a fatal blow with it, that person's a murderer, and the murderer is put to death. Or if someone is holding a wooden object and strikes someone a fatal blow with it, the person is a murderer, and the murderer is put to death. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death. When the avenger comes upon the murderer, the avenger shall put the murderer to death. If anyone with malice at forethought shoves another or throws something at them unintentionally so that they die, or if out of enmity one person hits another with their fist so that the other person dies, that person is put to death. That person is a murderer. The avenger of blood shall be put shall put the murderer to death when they meet. But if without enmity, someone suddenly pushes another or throws something at them unintentionally or without seeing them, drops a, on them a stone heavy enough to kill them and they die, then since that other person was not an enemy and no harm was intended, the assembly must judge between the accused and the avenger of blood according to these regulations. The assembly must protect the one accused of murder from the avenger of blood and send the accused back to the city of refuge to which they fled. The accused must stay there until the death of the high priest who was anointed with holy oil. But if the accused ever goes outside the limits of the city of the refuge to which they fled, and the avenger of blood finds them outside the city, the avenger of blood may kill the accused without being guilty of murder. The accused must stay in the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. Only after the death of the high priest may they return to their own property. This is to have the force of law for you throughout the generations to come, wherever you live. Anyone who kills a person is to be put to death as a murderer, only on the testimony of witnesses, but no one is to be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. Do not accept a ransom 
for the life of a murderer who deserves to die. They are to be put to death. Do not accept a ransom for anyone who has fled to this city of refuge, so allow them to go back and live on their own land before the death of the high priest. Do not pollute the land where you are. Bloodshed pollutes the land, and atonement cannot be made for the land on which blood has been shed, except by the blood of the one who shed it. Do not defile the land where you live and where you dwell, for I, the Lord, dwell among the Israelites. So uh, let's look at those cities of refuge before we read that last chapter. So here's the cities of refuge, and what you see is all of the land that's been given to all of the, the Israelites. You see the names of uh, the family, the, the men of the 12 tribes. Uh, and then you see the cities of refuge where if somebody killed somebody accidentally, they could run to. Uh, these were run by the Levites, as the passage said. And they could go there, and they would have to stay there uh, until the high priest died. So I guess a nice little thing that was set up. I'm not sure how often that really happened, but they were there. So let's finish up with with uh, uh, a little chink in everybody's plan that took place in chapter 36. The family heads of the clan of Gilead, son of Makir, son of Manasseh, who were from the clans of the descendants of Joseph, came and spoke before Moses and the leaders, the heads of the Israelite families, and they said, When the Lord commanded my Lord to give the land as an inheritance to the Israelites by lot, he ordered you to give the inheritance of, your, of our brother Zelophad to his daughters. Well, now suppose they marry men from other Israelite tribes. Then their inheritance will be taken from our ancestral inheritance and added to that of the tribe they marry into. And so part of the inheritance allotted to us will be taken away. When the year of Jubilee for the Israelites comes, their inheritance will be added to that of the tribe into which they marry. And their property will be taken from the tribal inheritance of our ancestors. Then at the Lord's command, Moses gave this order to the Israelites. What the tribe of the descendants of Joseph is saying is right. This is what the Lord commands of Zelophad's daughters. They may marry anyone they please as long as they marry within their father's tribal clan. No inheritance in Israel is to pass from one tribe to another. For every Israelite shall keep the tribal inheritance for their ancestors. Every daughter who inherits land in any Israelite tribe must marry someone in her father's tribal clan so that every Israelite who will possess the inheritance of their ancestors. No inheritance may pass from one tribe to another, for each Israelite tribe is to keep the land it inherits. So Zelophehad's daughters did as the Lord commanded. Zelophehad's daughters, Mahala, Mala, Terza, Hogla, Milka, and Noah married their cousins on their father's side. They married within the clans of the descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in their father's tribe and clan. These are the commands and regulations the Lord gave Moses to the Israelites on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. And so we see in these final chapters of uh, God setting up some things um, for um, issues that are not normal. Uh, somebody killing somebody accidentally. We have the daughters of um, Manasseh, family of Manasseh, that make sure they want their inheritance. And so just some, some uh-ohs that, that take place that, that God takes care of. Uh, so we see that God is involved, and he says that he's with the Israelites, and so uh, not to shed the blood. God is setting the stage for the Holy Spirit uh, to be dwelling in us as a Christian to be with us always. And he listens to our issues. And when we have some, um, God is willing to answer those in the best way uh, for everybody. I hope you have a great day. Uh,